You want your players to be able to save and load their progress in your game. Here I have a simple scene with a counter that counts how many times you press the plus button, and typical buttons for starting a new game, saving your game, and loading your game. The first step is to create a new script, inheriting from resource, preferably saved, in a folder for resources. In this script, you can define any variables you want of built-in types. Integers, floats, booleans, and strings. You can also use collections of them in either arrays or dictionaries. And even use built-in structures like vectors or colors. Only variables that have the export tag will be written to the save file. If you want to initialize your resources with values, you can override the init function to have it happen automatically when the resource is created. Give your resource a class name at the top of the script, which can be done in the same line as the extends keyword conventionally in Pascal case. Be sure to save your project when creating a new class before you try to use it. Now in a script in your project dedicated to managing access to this information, we can define a variable using the class name as its type. In the button pressed functions, when the new button is pressed, we can create a new instance of this resource using the class name followed by dot new, which will automatically call the init function too. To save your resource, the resource saver singleton class provides a save method. Just pass the resource to be saved, and the file path to save it. Starting with user colon slash slash will automatically provide an appropriate path on the system unique to each user, and you can name the file whatever you want. Using the extension .res will create a binary file that the user will not be able to easily access or modify, while .tres will save a text file that can be opened and edited in any text editor. In a similar fashion, the resource loader singleton can load the resource using the same path and assign it to the variable. But we should first check if the file exists using the exists method. If either new or load are pressed, we will need to set the count to match its new value, and also set the value in the resource before saving. Running this scene, the counter starts at zero and counts upward every time I press the plus button. Pressing new will reset the counter back to zero. Pressing load does nothing since there is no resource to load yet. Pressing save will create a resource file on my hard drive. Stopping the game and running it again, the counter again starts at zero, but I can load the saved resource from the last session, setting the counter back to its saved value. I can change the value, reset it, save it, and load it any number of times across any number of sessions. If you have any specific Godot-related questions that you want answered, leave it in the comments below, or you can join our Discord and ask our budding community of game developers. If you want to support me directly, join my Patreon, where you'll have access to all of my game development courses which are also available on Udemy and Skillshare if you like to pay more money. You'll also get early access to videos and courses before they're posted on other platforms. If you found this or any of my other videos helpful, like and subscribe.